Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's panel discussion on powering progress for all, bridging the gender gap in the energy field, held as part of this 19th Davos Conference 2024 in Rome. We are gathered here to address one of the most pressing issues of our time, how we can ensure equal access and opportunities for all, particularly women in the energy sector. This issue sits at the intersection of two crucial global challenges, achieving sustainability in energy development and reducing inequalities, particularly gender inequalities, as envisioned in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This DEVAS conference is dedicated to fostering sustainability by integrating energy, water, and environmental systems. It provides, therefore, the perfect platform to explore the gender dimension in these fields, as gender equality is essential to achieving sustainable energy solutions. Gender inequality in the energy sector is rooted in a complex web of social, institutional, and structural barriers, and not simply individual preferences. Women are often limited by social barriers that affect access to education, training, and decision-making roles. This underrepresentation is particularly persistent in the energy sector, as many data support, where women's contributions are often overlooked despite the unique perspectives they bring and particularly their focus on social equity and vulnerable communities. Addressing sustainable development goal gender equality is critical to dismantling these barriers. Empowering women in energy-related fields not only promotes justice, but also drives innovation, especially as we transition to clean energy sources under Sustainable Development Goal 7, affordable and clean energy. Women disproportionately affected by energy poverty must be included in these solutions to ensure equitable access. Moreover, Sustainable Development Goal 10, Reduce Inequalities, calls for reducing inequality within and among countries, including in economic opportunities and participation, and emphasizes the need to address systemic disparities across sectors, including energy. The energy sector, which serves as the backbone of global development, has long been a male-dominated field. Women continue to face barriers in leadership roles, access to training, and fair representation in decision-making processes. The gender gap in this sector is not just an issue of fairness, but one that impedes our ability to fully tap into the innovative and diverse perspectives required to transition to a sustainable and equitable energy future. Today's panel will focus on exploring the manifestations of gender bias in gender energy research, project design, and the dissemination of findings, as well as the impact these biases have on diverse communities. We will also examine strategies to promote gender equity, such as mentorship, diversifying research teams, and developing inclusive research agendas. By fostering a more inclusive energy sector, we can unlock the full potential of talent and innovation, ensuring a sustainable and equitable future for all. I'm Carla Montagut Montalva from Universitat Politecnica de Valencia in Spain, and I'm here with four panelists that come from different countries, starting with Pia Ulvenblad from Sweden, from Halstead University, Eva Skito uh, from Universidad de Pisa here in Italy, Monica Garcia Melon from Universitat Politecnica de Valencia in Spain, colleague, and Caroline Hachenbernet from Concordia University in Montreal, Canada. Each of them will give you a contents and a view of different aspects that we will cover in this uh, topic in the panel. Of course, there are infinite, but we will focus in some of them that we will introduce you in the minute. Also, we wanted to make a panel uh, which was inclusive and participative, okay? So we are going to uh, make also a, a participative uh, interactive questionnaire. So you will be able to answer with your mobile phones and then uh, to some questions that will, I will be activating along the panel. And then we will have uh, also time to put them in common after some few minutes of reflection in, uh, with your colleagues that are sitting next to you and also you know, sharing with all the public in the audience. And then uh, we will close the, the panel, hoping that it will be useful also for, for you. So I will give the word now to Eva Esquito. Eva is a senior researcher at the Department of Energy, System, Territory, and Construction Engineering in the University of Pisa in Italy. She's expert in design, modeling, and optimization of efficient energy systems in buildings. She will present strategies for promoting gender equity in STEM. For those that are not familiar with this concept, with this acronym, STEM means Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. 
the floor is yours, Eva. So thank you for the presentation and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I am Eva Skito and uh, I'm here not only for my uh, position as a senior researcher, but uh, also because uh, I, I want to present the strategies for promoting gender equity at my university. My university has recently created the new figures, the figures of delegate for gender equity for our depart for our university, and I am the delegate for our department for gender equity. So in uh, this slide, I present uh, some specific prog pro programs that uh, um, the University of Pisa have developed to uh, ensure and foster uh, um, female participation in uh, STEM academia. In particular, uh, for the first one, this is uh, a, a set uh, um, cycle of events that in Italian is scintille, it means sparks in English, because uh, it is a focus on uh, um, uh, inviting a female, famous female researcher to present their work at uh, STEAM students, to have a role model for uh, female students. Then we have also some guidelines to, um, to, for the gender equity in uh, conferences, and in particular in the, these guidelines, we focus on uh, the um, importance of having chairwomen and to, um, to invite uh, female experts in the STEAM field. Then we have this uh, uh, Sportello, which is uh, an anti-harassment hotline for all those uh, uh, students, uh, researcher, and professor, and every, everyone in the university environment that can report uh, incidents of harassment. And in this way, we hope to create a more respectable and safe environment for all. And finally, we uh, have some special fundings that uh, uh, the university have allocated to, um, to help uh, women re-engagement after maternity leave, so to help them to uh, re-engage in scientific research and to have uh, new labs and so on and activities, and also to, uh, special funding for childcare services, including uh, all, for example, summer school and so on, to support all those parents that are working parents. Okay, these are the strategies that uh, we have uh, already uh, promoted and uh, developed, but uh, in uh, the following slide, I will uh, show you some ongoing activities uh, that uh, are based on uh, historical data that uh, I have anal analyzed for uh, our department, and it is based on survivorship bias. I don't know if uh, all of you are familiar with this concept of survivorship bias, uh, no? Okay, so it is a good uh, news because I can explain with uh, an uh, example from uh, uh, World War II. Okay, it is not uh, very interesting, but uh, I think it, it is really explanatory. Um, you see in uh, this slide an example of uh, an aircraft with all the red dots that uh, identify all the um, fire from enemies. Uh, so, um, uh, this uh, plane, like many other similar planes uh, at the, uh, during the war, uh, managed to return to the base camp and were studied by a set of researchers that were uh, wanted to uh, reduce the number of aircraft that uh, were lost during the war, and so to reduce the loss of aircraft due to enemy fire. Do you know where the researcher decided to reinforce the areas? If one of you, the wings, other, other answer? The main uh, part of the plane? Well, it may seem odd, but uh, the researcher decided to reinforce all the area without the red dots and not with the red dots. And it might seem strange, but uh, you can see that uh, the uh, all the aircraft that, that were uh, have been uh, heavily damaged by all uh, those enemy fires that are the red spots returned from the mission. So this type of damage was not, uh, uh, was not uh, mortally. So it could be able to, uh, dr uh, to drive uh, again to the camp base. So it is a type of damage that aircraft could sustain. Instead, all the aircraft that, that were hit in all the other places, all the other white areas in this uh, in this figure, they cannot manage to return to the base. So it is uh, there that we want to 
uh, to reinforce the areas. So turning back in our, uh, in our field, we want to know what are the metaphorically uh, mortal wounds that uh, allow people, uh, female researchers, to stop the abandon their career to, um, to in a university and academia. So what are the reasons why female researchers are not uh, going uh, uh, through their career? I present some data from our department. In particular, in this slide, you can see that there is uh, this uh, share of female students at our master courses. It is about 40% and it's quite stable uh, during the whole years. But if we go on the research uh, part of the university, so focusing on a PhD, then the share is uh, a bit lower, 34%. So you can see that there is a leakage of a female going from the masters or the studies to the research activities. And uh, if we go uh, through the other job position at our department, you can see that this percentage is uh, even lower because uh, as for the PhD, for example, they are this uh, share is about 34%. Then the researcher is about 30% associate and full professor and instead about 10 percent so there is uh, some reason why female are abandoning their career and uh, this percentage you can see are stable during the year so it is not uh, a um, particular period when uh, um, we are focusing on another interesting statistic is that one so uh, all the 75 of the researcher the male researcher having started before 2020, now are associate professor, while for the female researcher, this percentage drops to 40%. And there are uh, several researchers that uh, have uh, quit their job at university or just have some delays. So uh, I, I would like to know what are your opinion about these factors that may lead women to leave STEM studies and research or to abandon their career because we want to uh, focus on strategies that are focuses on the, the problem. So I ask you to, uh, to give me an answer about what are, according to you, the reason why women are abandoning their research and uh, their job. First reason is lack of role models. So scarcity of visible female figure in STEAM, including not only renewed female scientists, but also female university researcher. Second reason is insufficient support and entry-level research position. So women often face challenges in securing support and guidance when entering research position. And the third reason is lack of self-confidence that can prevent women from fully engaging in STEM studying and pursuing research opportunities. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Eva, uh, for it was really a uh complete uh, content. Now the idea is that uh, we are going to activate the interactive questionnaire. Let's see if uh, the direct uh, works. <laughs> Murphy's Law is always there, but we've tried. So let's let's hope for the best. Uh, so everybody, uh, you can scan uh, this QR and open it. Then, uh, well, WooClap is the software. There are many platforms. This is one that I have licensed in my university. So this is the one that I am using. If it doesn't work, you can always write booklab.com in your browser and then enter the code that you see here. Okay. So now anything is nothing is activated because I have not activated the question yet. But at least the important thing is that it worked for everybody and you are in a kind of blue and white uh, screen where a question will be activated in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I will give just some seconds so everybody is able to do it. Yes, here in the first lines. Yeah. All right. What about at the at the <laughs> last lines? Okay. So uh, if more or less we are ready, I am going now. You will see that I go to my book lab uh, event. Okay. And I will show first. Uh, I would like to make some questions that we need also to analyze the results. How diverse is the public? Okay. So first question, easy one. Which gender do you identify with? Male, female, or no? Okay, I will not read the questions. I will let you read all of them. Okay. okay, so, sorry, I have to activate it. Yeah, it works. You have to submit. Okay, not working. Let's go, maybe it's sleeping. 
Ok, math is low. Mm? Oh, ok, because probably... Uh, ok, just a second. Ok, it was open during a long time, so maybe it's because of that. Now it works? Yeah. yeah. You know, first time always is difficult. Okay, so we see more or less uh, how the percentage. So we are quite, yeah, we have, uh, well, female is not the highest percentage. I'm, I'm surprised. This is, <laughs> this is great, <laughs> indeed. Okay, so you know, you have some time and then, um, right, next question. Where are you from? Then you can write, and then I will show here. The, the, the your country of residence, where you work, where you live. Okay, quite variety. Wow, really, there was is really international, right? Okay, Chile, Germany, Norway. You know, this is also because we will analyze the results later. Okay, all right. So you see that we have many countries. This is really great. It's diverse, public, right? So now I move to the next one. This is the first question. I, I have to put it big here. Okay, take your time to read it. Oh, I have to, sorry, I have to restore it again. Okay, just a second. <clears throat> I don't know what this is happening now, okay. Okay, so let's uh, let me just uh, just in case in order not to have the same problem because we were trying before. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, no, oh. sorry about that. I don't know. Yeah, I, it has always worked. This is what happens. Okay, now should work. Let's see. Okay, all right, sorry for the technology. I don't trust technology. Probably most of you don't trust either. <laughs> this is a proof. <laughs> okay. So we are not going to comment the results. We will do it later, but it's good you know, that you see more or less the, the opinion that others have. Okay. Yeah, next one. Now we have the second reason. Okay, I have to, this is the six ones, no? Okay, just the second. I think I have to restore all of them. Okay, so next one. <clears throat> have quite diverse opinions. This is great. Well, there will be debate then. This is great. All right. So then uh, this is the last question from this uh, section. Oh, sorry. Then we go back. So we made already all the questions uh, of this first uh, part. And now, you know, we, we will have time to put uh, results in common, okay? Then uh, I give the word to Monica Garcia Melon. She's a full professor at Universitat Politecnica de Valencia in Spain. 
her main line of research is the application of the multi-criteria uh, decision-making methodologies to create indicators that help evaluation and decision-making in participatory processes. She will present specific ways in which gender bias manifests in research, funding, project design, and dissemination of findings. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Carla. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. We are very happy to have many people in the room. It was one of our goals to have people here, especially to have men here. So that's good. So I'm going to I'm going to present the, uh, the results of a study that. Uh, we carried out our team back in Valencia. Uh, we are a social uh, social science research group, and we are we have been working in a in a regional project uh, financed by our science ministry, regional science ministry, in which we are uh, trying to analyze the gender gap in different research centers of our regional uh, of our region. The centers belong to different fields, and the the results I'm going to present here are the ones related to the energy fields. We have in different results in different fields of research. The particular ones I'm bringing here are the ones that affect this conference. So let's start with uh, results obtained for one particular energy center in the Valencian community in Spain. Let's start with the people working in the center. We have a total amount. Well, I, I'm not talking about amounts, but we have, as this, uh, we can see that in the highest category, which is full professor, we only have men in our research center. We start having women in the second category. And then uh, we, in general, we have very few women, uh, but uh, the big difference still is in the higher position. So that's what we call the vertical gap. So we have horizontal gap and also vertical gap. Horizontal gap, that's what the leaky, the leak, the, the leaky, the leaking pipeline that my colleague Eva was presenting uh, is what I'm, I'm telling here. Okay, so we have here the numbers and we have here the, the, the percentage in the, in the graphics. Also, uh, what I am going to analyze particularly are the data, the data obtained in our study. Let's start with secondary data. We analyze Scopus database of all the people belonging to this research center. And here we can see that in the average number of papers, we have uh, women. Of course, there is always more men than women, but the percentage of women is, is not, uh, it's okay. So it's not that low, and women are uh, performing quite well in the number of papers in general. I'm just giving very general comments, uh, especially when we move to the first author of the papers, we have a high number of women uh, leading these papers. So we can say, of course, there is none in full professor, but there is no women. So we can say that women in this research center are working hard to start leading their, their, their research. When we move to second, still in secondary data, when we move to the number of the research projects or contracts, here the figures are quite different. We have analyzed for that our un the university website. Here we can see that uh, when we focus on research, projects usually in spain research projects are funded by public by, by public uh, administration either national or regional also we include here U european projects it is very interesting to see how women have most of the of the projects are the leaders of most of the projects this is why our our what we think and we know it's 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 a fact in Spain, is that both our national government and our regional government give extra points to the research projects when they are led by women. It is a measure that has been implemented for the last 10 years. This is a measure explicitly devoted to close the gender gap in research. So we can say that has been successfully. On the other hand, when we move to contracts, the, the figures are quite different. 
here we can see that, for example, when we go to associate professors, only very few women lead projects and none uh, of the assistant professors, part-time teachers or research assistants. Well, this is a question that I'm going to raise later on. So let's keep this in mind. When uh, research is publicly funded, we have high number of women there. When research is financed by uh, different companies, not many women are leading these projects. Then let's analyze some data about pri uh, primary data about the interviews we had. We had we asked several questions. We interviewed many people, but I'm just bringing here some uh, s some of the answers. I'm not bringing here the whole study. The whole study is cannot be published, of course. So when the question was, have you taken maternity leave? Maternity is, of course, for women. 100% of the women said yes. When the question was, have you taken paternity leave? Question was, only 40% of the men took it. I have to say that in Spain, we have the same period for maternity leave that for paternity leave. We have four months with paid, 100% paid salary. It is also true that it hasn't been like that for, it's only, it has been like that only for the last years. But before that, instead of having Four months, we had two months, and before that, we had 15 days. So we ask about, because we are people of all the ages, so we ask people that could have taken one or two months, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> paternity leave, not only people who could have taken eight, uh, sorry, four months. It's still, they said, no, we, we didn't have time. I didn't have time. I couldn't. Well, the reasons were various and another thing that we uh, that in our team we think it's very important it's uh, uh, cap capacitation so the gender has uh, the gender knowledge it many times is not intrinsic so we need the training when we ask about have you received gender equality training in our in in our group of people interviewed more than I, I have, I haven't got the percentage, but it's around seventy-five percent here. Seventy-five percent of the people say that they did not have any gender training. So maybe this is one of the gaps that we have to to close. And finally, <clears throat> more more results about gender culture. When I'll just comment some of them uh, re regarding the working environment. When we uh, when we ask women. Many women interviewed affirm that work-life balance and especially motherhood has the greatest impact on women's professional development. The greatest, not one of the, but the greatest. Also, women feel less involved in social groups in their research institutes. Regarding gender in research contents, that's something that we haven't talked yet, it's perceived as something alien to the nature of the work. So the question was, what are you talking about? Gender uh, contents in the research, that's something that many people, especially men, but many people do not understand the meaning. That is very much related to gender uh, capacity or gender training. In studies where this perspective would have a place, because many times the answer was, in my studies, in my research line, there is no place for gender. That's the general answer. In those studies in which we know for a fact, because in other countries maybe, or in other situations, gender was uh, included, interviewees consider that they are not sufficiently trained in this respect. So we go back to the training, the lack of training. In short, the discourse of most of the men, men interviewed is that there is no gender-related problem in the institution, neither in the management of research nor, nor in the work environment. However, this is not the case for some of the female interviewees 
who mention different problems of gender discrimination, such as the distribution of tasks, very important, roles in the research activity. So, so far the conclusions of this study in the energy field, uh, it will work. Sorry. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Monica. You don't have to scan it again. Uh, this is just in case you didn't succeed the first time, but if you want to scan it, you can. Uh, we are going now to activate uh, some questions, right? Okay, I give you some time because some people are scanning. For those that are in, you don't have to do it again, okay? And then I will I will make sure that the questions work before <laughs> activating them. So just give me one second. All right. Yes, ready? Okay. Okay. So then uh, I go... Uh, I go uh, probably here, okay, okay. Yes, yeah. Okay, I was able to manage. So you see here, uh, why are there more women leading publicly funded projects than privately one funded ones? And here you have one of the reasons. This is the second reason. We have the second reason. Yes, we'll go. Okay. This is the first uh, reason. Okay. Okay. They already ah, they already voted. Yeah, this is what happens. Yeah, they already voted before. Okay, this one people already voted here before. This is why. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I follow. Okay. Here. This was already done. Okay. Then we go to the next one. Right. This is another one. Okay. Now it's active. This is a, another question. Why do you believe that work-life balance could have such a significant impact on women's professional development? one of the reasons okay. Right. okay this one I have to restore it okay sorry I have to restore this one this is the, the one, no? Okay. Just in case, I think we are in denial. Oh, okay, no, we're in denial. The, that was the last one, okay. Let's do something. This was not clear. Let's repeat this one again, sorry. Okay, sorry for the disturbance. Could you answer again? Maybe you change your mind? <laughs> <laughs> Meaning what? <laughs> And then when I go here, I stop. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then we go to the next one. All right, maybe they change their mind. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is also interesting. <laughs> this is the last question for this set. So if this is the second reason why you think this happens. All right. So thank you very much for your participation. Again, most of you agree, we will discuss later. So I give the word now to Caroline. Caroline Hashem Bernet, she is associate professor in Concordia University. Her current research program focuses on developing concepts and strategies for integrative design 
of Sustainable and Resilient Built Environment. She's going to present uh, the impact of gender bias on the effectiveness of energy solutions for diverse communities. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Carla. Thank you, everybody, to be uh, here. And I'm really happy to uh, to be part of this panel and discussing this very important subject. Uh, so I will not uh, actually give results from studies or uh, give you solution for this. I would rather uh, like to uh, throw your way some points uh, that I hope that they will provoke some ideas of discussion later on. Uh, so the first point that I would like to mention uh, how much we are actually consulting with women for technology development. So are the technology and energy uh, being developed with uh, much consultation uh, with women for their needs, for their daily routine and so on, uh, to uh, meet the practical uh, aspect of their uh, needs of their uh, life. Uh, research has shown that some of the uh, technologies uh, that have been uh, developed are not really uh, well adopted by women because of the fact that they they do not um, uh, coincide with their daily uh, routine. The other uh, point that relate to this also, how much actually technologies uh, are uh, designed uh, in a way uh, that uh, they can uh, uh, they, they can promote the health uh, of women and health of the families. Uh, some, uh, some research show that up to now, there are significant amount of women in different areas of the world. And here we are talking about diverse communities. We are not just talking about our uh, you know, specific environment and specific uh, countries. Uh, there are uh, still significant amount of women that are uh, using open uh, fire and open, uh, open fire in their home to uh, cook meals. Uh, which really uh, impact health and uh, impact the indoor pollution, uh, as well as different also uh, not very healthy uh, method of heating inside homes. Uh, not only we are talking about uh, the household, but also uh, economic uh, endeavor of women, business that are led by uh, women, how much, again, technologies are being developed uh, to help women in their pro productivity and in uh, developing their own independence. So that's one point that I would like you to reflect about. Uh, the second point is, uh, again, how much we understand the distinct energy consumption patterns of women. Uh, many research sh uh, has shown that uh, women actually are very effective uh, in sustainable practices. Uh, the women can uh, play a crucial role, as we know, in uh, adopting sustainable uh, practices and uh, to promote them and so on. At the same time, uh, women uh, are... Uh, very uh, also effective in prioritizing energy efficiency measures uh, in their homes. Uh, if it is not for energy or if it is not, uh, you know, planned, it's mostly sometimes to reduce their energy bills and to uh, provide a more economic uh, way for the family basically to uh, survive. Uh, but in the same time, uh, other research shows that the, uh, the energy consumption of women uh, in household is higher than men. And it's logical and it's well understood because uh, in many areas of the world, uh, still uh, women are uh, the person that uh, the persons that stay at home and uh, do the majority of the household uh, work. So they would need uh, their, to use the technology that needed for household uh, functions to happen. Uh, so this basically brings to us the ideas, uh, again, about the technologies, how the technology can be done to uh, help women reducing their energy consumption. Uh, maybe even think about more advanced measure, how maybe the supply uh, of, of energy can somehow meet the uh, peak energy demand of, of, uh, of women activity. Uh, also thinking about uh, how to provide education uh, for women to understand, uh, again, how they can uh, reduce their ener energy consumption through different measures. And the third point is uh, women in energy leadership role. Uh, my uh, co-panelists here have mentioned this uh, a little bit before, and I know that we will discuss it uh, even more later on. Uh, so uh, research has shown that they, there is really very uh, few still uh, women in uh, energy leadership roles. In technology in general, women uh, pr uh, role is very uh, little, is about 20% or less. Uh, research shows that they, in energy uh, in general is low. Uh, in renewable energy is higher, it's about 30%, which is a really good uh, indicator. Uh, but still, in general, it's about 30-33%. Uh, and this is affects many other fields, as we'll see here, but also it's affected by other uh, 
by other factors. So it kind of creates uh, this uh, kind of a vicious circle. Uh, so we see that there is a, a, la a lack of representation uh, of women in decision making. Uh, so they uh, do not, uh, women are not uh, well represented. Uh, there is lack of women in uh, executive uh, roles. Uh, this is uh, this affects the uh, bias in technology, as uh, uh, I have mentioned before, uh, where technologies have been designed without uh, most of the time considering women need. Uh, but also uh, there is bias in resource allocation, if it is in research or if it is in private funding or it is in different uh, other uh, way of providing uh, uh, resources. Uh, this affects also the barriers uh, to participation. Uh, Monica has mentioned uh, the uh, lack of uh, of role model. Uh, this is one of the uh, barriers, but there are also different other uh, barriers uh, that again affect uh, the uh, women in leadership roles and affected by the by 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 it. Uh, inclusive communication, where the projects uh, often fail to communicate effectively with uh, women. Uh, and finally, policy and uh, advocacy, where there is a uh, lack of uh, gen gender sensitive policies that usually affect, again, the effectiveness of energy uh, and energy solutions. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, stop my uh, talks. I hope that these points uh, let you think about uh, some interesting uh, discussion later on, and we will uh, go to, again to the same routine with uh, three uh, related questions. Thank you very much, uh, Caroline. So uh, with the same dynamics, now we are all familiar with it. Okay, uh, I will leave it just some seconds. So if you wish to scan it again, you can scan it again. No worries, you don't have to, but if you need, you can. Okay, and then let's, uh, okay, um, probably uh, I have to restore, I took notes. You know, okay, just a second. I will restore some of the questions. Okay, this is the first one. Oh, okay. Just one second. But I did 12. The ones, the others were done. Yeah. All right. So let's go. Uh, no, nine uh, was already done. All right. So let's go. So I put it in. Uh, first question of this set. Okay, move to the next one. Right. Okay, next one. Okay, and then the last one of this set. Sure. 
Okay. So now we move to the last part of the contents, uh, last but not least, uh, with Pia Ulvenblot. <laughs> Sorry for my very bad pronunciation, Pia. <laughs> okay, so um, Pia is Associate Professor in Business Administration at Halmstad University in Sweden and Vice Chair in WITEC Sweden, which means European Association for Women in Science, Engineering and Technology. She is leading the research program ProACTS promoting resource efficiency, co-creative actions, and innovation for sustainable transition at Halmstad University. The floor is yours, Pia. Thank you, Carla. Um, we need the pointer, yeah. Thank you, Carla, and thank you for still being with us and being active in this questioning and answering. It's great, great to see that. Um, I would end up now, because I'm the last person talking about gender inclusion, and I would like to go into the. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hello. <laughs> okay, I'm the fourth person, and we have heard a lot from my colleague panelists here. I will go into some parts of the barrier literature to um, to also discuss different types of barriers and we have heard of course already about in the individual preferences and i was really happy that no not all of you thought that women felt insecure in one of the the questions here before what we would like to highlight what i would like to highlight is that there are different types of barriers of course, there are individual barriers if someone doesn't want to do something, um, but there could also be more subtle barriers that are structures that are surrounding us, or there are social constructions that are surrounding us. And um, social barriers might, for example, limit women to some types of education, training, employment, uh, also to some types of subjects as we have heard before structural barriers um, could be social constructions it could be about how we think about that men should perceive or act how we think about that women should be it's something that we socially construct and many times it's inherited from previous generations from mother from father from teachers or whatever Structures could also hinder and act as barriers for females' inclusion in decision-making bodies. If we look at uh, and try to find well, what is a structural barrier, we, we could, for example, see here that lack of role models, lack of leadership, as we have heard here before, that could be something that is in the structure of an organization. Um, also, unequal growth opportunities. Why is it like that? Something in the structure is, is hindering women in the arena. Also, the gen gender pay gap, something that we have in the structures. Uh, so, so, structural barriers is important to bring with us because if we just blame women for being weak or, or so, we will not come further in this discussion. If we look at the concept gender mainstreaming that is many times talked about in, in Europe, in European Commission, we have a gender mainstreaming policy that every activity we do, every project we finance should have a gender equality balance plan and be inclusive. Yeah, of course, there are barriers to these uh, developments also. And here we have some structural barriers also. It could be like uh, gender issues are still interpreted as women issues. And if that is the case, it's not easy to come forward because we are all in this work life together. And we all need, as Carla started with, to take benefit of all the talent and all the knowledge that we need when we should solve difficult and complex problems in our society, not the least related to climate issues. It could also, 
also, of course, be structural barriers that are external related to policies. Just some examples. And my last slide is, of course, it's negative to just talk about barriers, but are there some promising strategies? Yes, there are. Um, and I actually wrote down the gender mainstream, mainstreaming policy, and that, that really is a good strategy, I would say. It's also a good strategy with gender equality plans because something happens that uh, makes us more aware of these questions. Capacity competence building, role models in leadership, in entrepreneurship, in education, in STEM education, and so on. Putting policies into place. I, I like these four concepts. <laughs> to plan. And I would be happy if it will be implemented. But that is not enough. It's not enough to create awareness plan and implement. We actually also need to monitor the process because it is so easy that we have a plan, we implement small things, and then everything is going away from us. So I really like that, create awareness, plan, implement, and monitor. And my last word is to, uh, uh, as a promising strategy, actually try to identify structural barriers to be able to overcome. Thank you very much, Pia. All right, so let's go to the last set of questions. Okay, then again, probably none of you needs to scan it. I wait some seconds. <clears throat> okay, then I fix the questions. Right. Yeah. Just one second, I finished in less than one minute. <clears throat> All right, so we start with the first one of the set. All right. Time is running. Some last minute qu uh, answers. <laughs> right. Go to the next one. Next, would you agree that the decrease of structural barriers, let's make it bigger? <clears throat> Then, uh, then we go with two last questions uh, that are not so much related to the content itself, but about the how useful you found this panel. Okay. Oh, sorry, this is our last one before that. <laughs> no, yes, indeed, this is one of the, we have two more. This is one of them. If you find it useful. Mm. 
perfect. And then here we give you more time. So the thing is, does this panel bring new ideas or suggestions to mind for enhancing women's inclusion? So you just write. If you have more than one idea, you can write it in the same uh, space, but separated by commas, please, because you can only write in one space. You can have more than one idea. Sorry, uh, the question? Yep, uh, I close this. Does this panel bring new ideas or suggestions to mind for enhancing gender women's inclusion in the energy field? Okay. All right, nice ideas. We will analyze them together when we do the wrap up. All right. All the ideas are important. All right. See if time is up. We have still some more time. But well, if I see that people are more or less ready, then we stop. You know, we wanted to give you time to think about it because later on we will put it in common. So it looks like more or less uh, you finish, yeah. <coughs> okay, so time is up. So uh, now uh, the idea, uh, what we propose you is that you spend uh, two three minutes at maximum, and you know discussing with the people around you about the you know you've seen the results about you can give your opinion or not you know we speak discuss a bit. And then uh, um, we will uh, get the time to export the results and then analyze the report all together and then uh, give debate. Uh, there will be time for debate until we close, we close, finalize the, the time. Okay? All right. So thank you very much in advance. And then we have some, let's say, time to for reflection, two, three minutes maximum. Okay? Don't leave. The, <laughs> the nice part is coming. <laughs> So talk to your neighbors, turn around or whatever, and discuss uh, eventual questions for the panel afterwards, learnings, suggestions for next steps. Okay, so time for reflection is up. Okay, I know that this is really interesting topic. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so time for reflection is up. I'm very happy that conversations were going on, so this is uh, really good. Now we're going to analyze the the, the results. Oh, oh, sorry. Before <laughs> then, this is a dynamic, complex dynamic of the panel. Okay, so before then, uh, maybe uh, you want to share with us any agreement or common conclusion from the your conversations, we give you the, now you have the voice. Just raise your hand and we give you the, okay. So uh, 
anybody able to help with the microphone? Yep. Thank you. I thank you very much for such an interesting uh, panel discussion. I was having a very nice discussion with Rodriguez here. And I think for us, maybe the conclusion or yeah, a big takeaway is the fact that um, I think the issue starts from society. It's more of a societal issue in terms of how we are raised even uh, from, um, from birth, that there are gender roles that are already predetermined, that you should follow this route. Uh, if you're a female, you should follow that route and this um, work is for males and female and it became very clear when we saw in the statistics where you have paternity leave for both paternity leave and maternity leave and the male did not take it because the responsibility in terms of society is like raising a child is a female job and the same thing when it comes to certain uh, professions like your engineering and stuff like that it's like that woman you're supposed to do a, a, another type of um, you know job but this one is mainly reserved for, for for males and I think maybe the end of it is like it's true we need more um, representation male uh, female representation and when the wi the women are in high positions in those um, fields they need to be made more visible they, because then they create um, they become role models for young girls and children so that they can see that it's okay to choose to be an engineer to choose to be in energy to choose to be in senior positions and yeah it was quite a nice discussion thank you Okay, thank you very much. Any more comments before we analyze the results? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. It was uh, an interesting panel discussion. Uh, a few of the things that attracted my attention are some of the questions of how women can be involved in decision making, especially uh, in renewable energy uh, adoption, use, and acceptance, uh, because that's uh, part of what I'm studying in my PhD. Uh, and uh, I noticed that most of the questions that were included in some of the uh, wood, is it wood club, uh, were very interesting for me. And um, I already uh, identified some of these potential questions for my survey, and that this is. Uh, uh, the best way to uh, tackle some of these uh, barriers as um, you clarified and, and, and discussed. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Anybody else that would like to participate? There will be time for discussion as well later. All right. So uh, let's go to analyze the results. Okay, so here uh, I will try to go to the questions. We will focus probably in those where there was the, the answer was more diverse, no? Or oh, polemic, let's say. All right, so uh, first uh, thing is good to see that uh, there are 50% of male uh, at participating in these questions and 44% uh, female. So this is also good news because the results will be representative. Then, uh, uh, sorry, we go here. We will ask you for your nationality once again before we finish, because it, uh, all right. So uh, in this case, uh, regarding the STEM studies, uh, first reason why women, uh, we think they abandon their careers, it's quite uh, diverse, no? Let's say that most of you agree, but then we have uh, some disagree and neutral. Um, I don't know if we would like to somebody to comment or we give the word at the end. At the end. Yeah, maybe at the end. Okay, so keep in mind this one. Then uh, what factors might lead women to leave STEM studies? Then the second reason was insufficient support, support. So again, results are very similar. It could happen that maybe completely, agree. yeah, they, they are quite quite similar to the, so let's say that Mm, both reasons could be, uh, let's say, the reason, according to the audience. Then the, regarding the lack of confidence, results are different. 
uh, then the complete degree has increased, has doubled, uh, and then the, of course, uh, as a consequence, uh, the agree has decreased. Some some people changed their vote from agree maybe to completely agree. No, so uh, um, okay. It looks like a uh, result can be can be different. Oh, my opinion is different. All right. Then regarding the research funding, uh, why do you think that women lead more public projects than at private ones? First reason was regarding the, you know, this networking where sometimes the ne people negotiate having lunch or playing football, these kind of things. So this is the networking. Uh, most of you agree that uh, men usually uh, create their own networks uh, that are inaccessible to women, but still there is some disagreement. And it is it is curious to see a 20%, quite high, completely disagree percentage here, which is interesting to discuss. We will, discuss we, we will discuss this one. Um, then uh, the second reason would be that women feel insecure uh, because uh, private companies, let's say, are more results oriented. Here it's not so clear, no? Um, let's say completely disagree is, is quite uh, relevant. And then we have neutral or, or disagree, which is quite high also. So let's say that you disagree. Then uh, really regarding the work-life balance, uh, men don't take as much active part in the family environment. Most of you agree and completely agree. So this is quite, there is a percentage non negligible about 16% uh, disagree. Then uh, men should take on the family burden and combine it with work. It's an, uh, a huge uh, percentage of agreement here. Still we have some completely disagree there. To what extent do you agree that targeted informational campaigns can bridge knowledge gap for women in assessing energy programs? Uh, here, let's say that um, agree and neutral, no? Uh, mostly agree this is the result. Do you believe that improving affordability, usability, and cultural accessibility different technologies can increase their adoption among women? Again, uh, it's more agreement, no? There is an, uh, an agreement or neutral position. Then uh, participatory design approaches and uh, where women uh, are involved in the design process can improve the adoption rates of innovative energy technologies. Again, there is an agreement. So let's say that in these ones, which are more technical related, probably all of us agree, no? Uh, is that there is a huge uh, predominant agreement. And then this one, how much do you agree that community-led demonstration and pilot projects are effective in overcoming resistance to new energy technologies among women? Again, we have an agreement, but it's, uh, there is a 7% of disagreement and neutral, but again, let's say mostly agree. Then uh, this is a, a, a very interesting question because maybe you, you, you didn't know that you were experiencing structural barriers in the organization and after this panel, you identify that really you experienced some of them. Here we see agree and completely agree. So uh, this is quite also relevant, uh, mostly agree. It's 60% agree or completely agree. Then is it possible for you to create awareness about structural barriers in the organization? We have a, a high percentage of agreement, but still uh, there is a 20% of disagreement that is uh, relevant. Would you agree that the decrease of structural barriers could help women to take part in decision-making bodies? Here we have a high agreement and uh, some neutral, but let's say mostly agree and completely agree. Did you find this panel useful for finding ways to close the gender gap in research field? The, the opinion is quite uh, uh, variable, uh, mostly agree, but also neutral, so it's not so clear um, if it was useful or not. Then uh, some new ideas that probably we can comment later. Uh, it was really nice to see a very diverse opinion as I was more or less reading the, the comments. So this is great. And then uh, maybe we can focus, Monica, in uh, some of, uh, yeah. we can identify some of them that we can comment further. And then you, you can give us your, your opinion. In that. We can debate on it. Hmm? Which ones do you think? From what I've seen, I, I'll start. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. I've seen from the results. I would, I, I would say that those those questions that are affecting us as persons, that that situation may have hap had happened to me or to my colleague. What when they are asking about us as persons, as researchers in this case, 
there is more uh, variety in response. So it's more conflicted. That's what we call the, the conflicted questions. However, those questions that are more focused on community that maybe do not affect us personally are more almost, uh, they all the answers go to the completely agree, agree, because we have all always prepared the questions in a positive way. So this is one of the main issues that I wanted to raise, that gender issues affect us all. And uh, we are, we live in communities and we know, all of us, people in this, in this room, we all know that there are gender issues around us. We want to be, uh, we want to think about them or not. This is our decision. We are not forced to think about them. But when we are forced to, to think about that, it's when we um, see that opinions are so different or can be very different. And we have to be, we have to accept all the opinions, of course. And we have to work, people that work, all of us that work on one of our way, aims is to close this gender gap, need to work with this variety of opinions. Because if we all are feminists, it's very easy to find a way for, uh, for us, a, a way out. But people, we not, not all the people are feminists. That's, that's an example, very easy example. So one important thing is that to see that our opinions are very different. And when we look for changes, when we look to remove uh, structural barriers, uh, we need to think that we are not alone. I mean, it's not us only thinking. We need to think about all these people. So this is probably what makes our work more complicated this us that we work on gender issues that was one thing that i wanted to to mention that i've seen this diversity of answers only in those questions that affect us directly okay what? yeah i could select one question i i, I don't i don't know what so far yeah it was one of of the questions that i rose for example, this one, no, this one was, yeah, this one. So we have a, 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 a many people saying completely disagree. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so sorry. Uh, sorry, because really, indeed, uh, we are running out of time. We have eight minutes. So uh, this is a live uh, process. Mm -hmm. uh, this panel is a live <laughs> participative panel. And then the idea is to give you the voice. Okay, so we have around 10 minutes. So you can give your opinion about uh, the results. Okay, what do you feel? What do you think? Yes, here in the public, please. Uh. Well, uh, quickly, thank you very much for this panel that I find very like uh, inspiring, uh, while opening, in my case at least. And I wanted to complete uh, or to com to, to add something to your interpretation of results is like I was more interpreting in, I, interpreting them in of for the diagnosis we don't quite agree, like talking about reasons but for the solutions we may agree more it's like we all feel or in this room at least that the strategies that you have put forward will work why my bewilderment as, at least when thinking how but here we don't have it so clear any of this Estrella said, or are uh, actually um, of our normal uh, concern, like it is getting results. So in the end, um, uh, my, my point is that uh, as when, when you wake up to something, it, it's difficult to understand why this happened, although maybe it's easier to rely on experts <laughs> and, and um, believe that those solutions could work. And that, that was my like the point I wanted to raise. Thank you very much. You can also make questions if you have questions or doubts that you would like to raise to the panelists. Okay. I put here the the comments uh, that maybe we can read. Um, ideas mm -hmm. that came to your minds. Address gender inequality early in school with role models. There is a need of gender parity in top positions. There are institutional plans for addressing the gender gap, but not necessarily those in energy 
empowering humanity in transitions, resistant implementation, monitoring processes, implementing gender-related research questions, creating awareness, should have mandatory training in gender equality. We were discussing that, uh, inclusivity. There should be ways to prevent bias to balance involvement of women in projects based on merit and for plus one points. They say this is just a, a suggestion. I think it's good because we, we, we will, you know, these these suggestions. I think that we could share maybe the results. I will talk about about it with the organization and maybe you know this can be useful also for other people that want to work on this. For instance, the PhD students. Okay, so yeah, we can share it with you. Reduce bias both in women and men thoughts and beliefs. Eliminate barriers, enable women supporting women, research meetings, this is very nice. Making women inclusion topics more common in conferences such as this. Maybe more awareness and ideas at this point. Closing the structural, cultural, and other related barriers could be of help in closing the gap. See the gap, but don't see the solution. This is what uh, Thomas was raising, this is true. We need another panel for going deep into the solutions, is right. Women need to show its confidence more frequently. Women needs to promote their work, to create kind of courses for gender barriers identification at workplace, including examples of women models in the seminaries that I organize, monitor gender consultancy, positive discrimination party rules, graphs without numbers are misleading and deceptive. Please update those slides. Okay, we will take notes. <laughs> Thank you for your constructive comment. <laughs> Yes and no, I am a bit more aware of the problem space. Thank you for that, but the solutions, I don't know. The discussion should be open to more social inequalities. This is true, but we have the public that we have in Sweden. So, you know, <laughs> we will keep on working in other conferences. This session was more like an awareness seminar to me than suggestions. It is true, what I mean, uh, this is only related to, let's propose some more solutions, no? We are on our way, but it, you know, in order, from my opinion, you can complement. In order to propose solutions, you need a diagnosis, okay? You need to know which are the problems, otherwise you cannot propose the solutions. So again, let's say it was out of this, let's say we, didn't, we are running out of time, we need another panel for that, indeed. But we will keep on working. I think that the team came up from here. Gender education and gender perspective for research and question, women empowerment financially, propose women only project teams, I don't really understand this one. Maybe somebody in the public can comment on it later. Female mentoring, yeah. Propose uh, panels, projects. projects that only are women involved. Ah, I see, I see. Um, female mentoring programs, no idea. Uh, web, web need practical examples. Committees should be gender balanced. This raises awareness, all right. So now that you've seen the comments, it doesn't matter if it's your comment or not. Maybe you can say, okay, I don't agree with this comment or I fully agree with this comment and this is the reason why. So we have some two minutes, two minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> One or two comments, if you would like to. Yes, here. Uh, uh, there was a comment that um, there should be only women-led teams. And um, I think towards the end there, down there, down. Uh, yeah, this second last on this, yeah. Y yes, project propose women only project teams. I, in my opinion, this would be misleading. Uh, it would, uh, in my opinion, it would cre create gender insensitivity where issues are being discussed in a, a certain direction that will create opposition by the other team. So that is why uh, these days most of, say, calls for funding and whatever want, uh, you know, gender balance. And uh, I, 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 in my opinion, I disagree with that. It's my opinion, so you don't have to find about them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have one minute, and we need to ask you your nationality again because we lost the data. Uh, and we are we plan to make a study with this and maybe present it in the next SDS conference as a research work. Okay. So we would very much appreciate if you could answer that question. Um, let us restore it again. Where are you from? Sorry? 
Ah, the QR, yes, right. Um, just a second. It will take you, you know, 30 seconds is the time for answering. Okay. Yep. So then if we are lucky, we go here. Where are you from? Okay. Show it. Okay. Does it appear to you? Yes. All right. So let's start. Please write your country of residence. I think it's nice to see how many nationalities are there. This is also a good, uh, well, I know that in Sleves organization they, they have made this analysis, no? Spain. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. So then you yeah. see here the results. Yes. Okay. So uh, probably we are closing. Yeah. So as a sum up, uh, we have analyzed different aspects of uh, gender um, balance in the energy field and how to bridge this gap. We made a diagnosis. We will continue working in the solutions. It is true that we proposed some solutions at the end, no? But we didn't go into deep. Um, we were doing more a di diagnosis. I hope that now maybe you added value or enriched your knowledge uh, and your minds about the big different dimensions that we were commenting. And th I thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank, thank you. you. Have a nice evening. <laughs>